Welcome to a lesson with Dr. Powell. We're going to look at a way that we can find the um, kernel or a basis for the kernel of a matrix. We're going to assume that the matrix that we're working with is in reduced row echelon form. So before we even find the basis for a kernel, we get it into reduced row echelon form. Notice that this is reduced row echelon form with some um, pivots. This is a pivot right here. This is a pivot right here. And this is a pivot right here. There's also some non-pivot columns. What we're going to do in this process is we're going to turn the non-pivot columns into the basis for the kernel. So the first thing that we do, looking at this, we take these non-basis columns these um, non-pivot columns, and we're going to add zeros at the bottom so that this guy will appear to be like a square. Um, so we think we have th we have seven across, we need seven down. So we would append four zeros, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, um, one, two, four, and one, two, three, four. Now, After we have these appended, we're going to be thinking about what thinking about changing these non-pivot columns. Um, what we do is we look at all the pivots, and these pivots are going to have power. What they're going to do is they're going to send an arrow horizontally out, and every time they hit something, they're going to do something to it. Since this pivot is in the second column, that means every time it hits something, it's going to send it to the second row, hit second row, hit second row. But when it sends it to the second row, it's also going to um, um, change its sign. So this positive three will become a negative three. This positive four will become a negative four. That negative two will become a positive two. So we can take a look and see what's happened. Three came down, negative three, negative four, positive two. All right, but what about this five? Well, this five would have been moved, so it's okay. So it's gonna be out of the way. It moves because of this pivot right here. As this pivot comes, it hits its two. Now, this pivot is in the fourth column, so it means that whatever it hits, it'll send to the fourth row but and change its sign. Fourth row, change sign. This pivot will go on, hit, hit things. When it hits this, it'll send it. Since this is in the sixth column, it'll send this guy to the sixth row and change its sign. So we end up getting something like this. We're almost done. This is, in fact, this is just the zero vector. It's not even a, uh, it's not even worthy to be an element of a basis. However, the next step will remedy that. So now we just simply add ones down the diagonal right here. And the result that we get by adding these ones down the diagonal actually gives us a basis for the kernel. So we have just arrived at the basis for the kernel of the matrix that we started with that was already in reduced row echelon form. So we can go back there and see kind of where we started. So we started right here with this matrix and we were able to successfully find a basis for the kernel by following this technique. Where does this technique come from? Well, if you were to take this matrix, you've already done all your row operations that are necessary, perhaps for, move, for putting this into um, reduced row echelon form for putting it even to Smith normal form, which is a specialized form of the matrix, which um, by doing row and column operations where you have an identity chunk up here in this corner and zeros everywhere else. Um, now, in the process of doing that, of getting it there, we've done all the row operations we need. So next, we just need column operations. Now, the column operations, when we do those, actually the kernel of the base, um, if we were to write out a matrix for the column operations that take us to Smith normal form, um, the, um, the, all the columns to the far right, kind of on the side of where this identity kind of hits, these columns actually end up being uh, a nice basis for the kernel. And so that is a so what we are doing right now is actually mimicking what happens 
when we're doing the column, when we're finding that column operations matrix and finding those columns, but we're kind of doing it in a simplified way, kind of like a synthetic division is with polynomials. Um, but that's essentially where it comes from. Okay, so there we have it. Thanks for watching.